Consciousness, the final frontier. These are the voyages into the universe between your ears. Our mission, to explore collective wisdom, seek out amazing secrets, and spread the message of personal potential. Images, etc. Like, that's not being in your comfort zone because your comfort zone could quite easily be, oh, actually, I'm just going to, you know what, I'm going to put the PlayStation on or I'm going to watch TV or watch a film. You know, that, so it's, it depends which way you look at it, I suppose, and what the different mm -hmm. thing is for each person. Yeah, I mean, stepping yeah. out of the comfort zone um, was always uh, very questionable for me personally. I thought people are putting uh, wrong, a uh, wrong interpretation. I think wrong um, a perception of that, right? So yeah. if if you're thinking that, and I met a lot of people like that. So unless you go through pain, you're not gonna get anywhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Then it's just uh, you know it's not. It's not my view at all. You know, I mean, if you have to um, do something that you know is really unpleasant and you're not aligned with it, yeah, uh, is if if that's what we are calling uh, stepping outside of the comfort zone, and then that would mean growth, then it doesn't work for everybody. For me, it definitely doesn't work. You know, yeah. um, I'll just get myself in trouble, more trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more trouble. <laughs> yes. You know, that's how I started with stock investing. I went outside of comfort zone yeah. and I lost all my money. <laughs> I remember well, that. you know, the, 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 the thing yeah. that uh, I can uh, offer up as a really recent example for me, well, actually, the most recent, and it's because, uh, Alex, when we started talking and, and you were talking, what was the guy who did the song? What was his name? Uh, the Dreamers. Okay. Stonesy. Stonesy. Yeah. Stonesy. Uh, the reason I was saying just, you know, contact him is because we're going to be in about two weeks. We're interviewing this guy who is the, the modern day Napoleon Hill. Oh, wow. He, oh, he's, yeah. he's the only person who's been given the, you know, the blessing by the Napoleon Hill Foundation to carry on that work. Oh, wow. And I just sent an email. Mm. I was like, well, I got nothing to lose. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. so I sent him an email. I said, would you, you know, would you be interested in doing this? This is what we're, we're we hadn't even launched our show yet. And uh, I don't know, a couple of days later, we got an email back and wow. we were scheduled. So, um, nice. good work. And that was not something that I expected. You know, I was a little uncomfortable doing it. It was like, a, but you, you kind of, if you can sort of question yourself and go, well, you know, what's the downside? Yeah. It's not like you send an email out to somebody and they go, oh, I'm telling everybody about this idiot. Nobody better talk to him. Yeah, yeah. You know, what you put in that email. But, you know, if you're respectful, whatever, yeah, it's amazing what will what'll happen out of it, you know. So you, uh, I guess, being outside of comfort zone, I would, I would rephrase it. If you're present and you take all these different layers that the mind creates for you, uh, obstacles, right? Uh, then they won't, you won't be in, a, in, in the zone of discomfort because what, what is discomfort? It's mind, uh, the mind, you know, like constructing obstacles and barriers and reasons, you know, whatever. But uh, I mean, it, once all these layers are out and you still feel this is just not me, intuition is telling me it's not me, my emotion, I'm not feeling good about this. Mm -hmm um but you're fully present right yeah then don't do it i, I would say you know i i had many many situations when i kind of listened to my inner voice and i didn't do it and i was right and in, in hindsight i could like see all but a, a lot of these things though you know that it's the right thing to do you know you know that I, I, I'm introverted and, and I will sometimes go to, I'll drive a long way sometimes to go mm -hmm. to some event. Some, it's a networking event, it's a, yeah. a seminar of some kind and there's gonna be networking as part of it and things. And I have, have driven and sat in the parking lot and talked myself out of going inside. Really? 
turn around, go home. Wow. You know, it's outside of my comfort zone to go in and, and stick out my hand and, and, and meet yeah. people, you know, it's easier and it gets easier as mm -hmm. we talk to more people and, and, and as you do whatever it is that you're, you're starting to do when you go outside of your comfort zone, it gets easier. Yeah, so yeah. It was in that example team, right? What was preventing you from going with it? Uh, don't you think it was your negative ego that was preventing? Uh, and you basically, you had to conquer your ego. You, uh, out, going outside of comfort zone in that sense is, um, uh, you know, conquering your ego. Yeah, there's no rational uh, anything behind it. It's just... But because in all other things, I mean, you're going there, there'll be people, I mean, if you just talk yourself into it like this, I just need to be present. I am myself. I believe myself. I'm confident. I'm going there and I'm going to have a great time talking with these people. They're just souls and on this earth and I'm going to make a connection with them. I'm going to look yeah, no argument. straight in the eyes and I'm going to listen to them and I'm going to tell them what I feel. <laughs> if I don't like what they say, I'm going to smack them. Yeah, away. Well, you know, I, I'm going to be present and that's going to be the most real thing that there could, it, it can be. And how could yeah. it be bad? You know, I mean, yeah. I am what I am. So just take me as I uh, am. But there, there's stuff that, you know, that I, I have a, a friend who's a, a speaker and a coach and stuff. And, and, um, and a lot of these people do this as, as part of their seminar or whatever. They, everybody like, get up and they crank up some music. Oh, everybody dance. Listen, uh -uh, oh, yeah. I'm not doing it. You know, and I know if I'm going to his event, he's mm -hmm. going to have people doing that. And they're uh -huh. not, he's not at the stage yet where he's got giant crowds. So you don't get, you can't get lost in the crowd. You know, there might be 15 or 20 people. Yeah. It's hard to be inconspicuous when you're the only, one of the only ones standing there going, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, so that, it, it, I, I imagine it would be good for me to mm -hmm. find a way to get into doing the dancing. But I know going in, it's going to be uncomfortable. Yeah. So just showing up it's funny. is going outside of my comfort zone. Yeah. For me, my, like, my wife, uh, sorry, go, go ahead, Alex. Thank you. What I was going to say is like for me, the, the whole comfort zone thing is just, it's more about experiencing new things and trying something new more than anything else. You know, it's not, you know, even in that, that situation for you, Tim, it's like, cool, you probably wouldn't have normally gone and done it. But if you did, it was still a new experience and you're still yeah. learning something you and that's what that's when you know you're stepping out of your comfort zone is because you are putting yourself in a situation to learn something and, and you know like we said to grow and yeah. develop and experience something completely new well the ego is set up to to avoid any kind of change at all at all costs yeah. if possible you know yeah. and yeah, you just it, have to it override could, it it could be challenged you, you could be rejected there it, it, there could be some social tension, whatever. Yeah. I think it's all ego driven, yeah. right? Yeah. So, but uh, I was recently convinced to join my wife and her friends to go to a salsa class. <laughs> nice. I really didn't want to go there, I promise you, because I just don't like salsa. And I don't know what the big deal is with salsa. You know, it's all repetitive. I, I'm for free expression, you know, I don't need yeah, to. Yeah structure you know tell don't tell me to follow some routine i i know how to express myself <laughs> you know if you think of it this is kind of like uh you know it, it 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 doesn't i mean if they're enjoying it fine right but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. why do you have to learn their way i have my own why do i have to you know move the way you told me how to right yeah. so but i went there I had a couple of drinks just to get me in the zone. <laughs> you know? uh, and they're so preparation is important. <laughs> and they're so you know they had a class and they're just so great and there are these men there who are so experienced and you know and uh, you know my wife is pulling me on the dance floor come and dance with me right I'm gonna suck at that dance I know that you know so what do I do do I go and just uh, do whatever the hell I you know, I do there, or do I just get myself out of that situation? What What would you do, Alex? I probably would have just done it, man. <laughs> 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 I would have just gone with the flow. I mean, 
No, in fairness, I'm, you know, I'm saying that, but it's a bit more difficult when you are in the situation. Yeah, I'm, was, I'm already there. I put myself uh, in the situation. <laughs> yeah, I was in LA in the summer and I was seeing a friend <laughs> out there and she's a um, dancer, you know, um, like salsa kind of dancing. Mm-hmm. And we went to this festival and it was at her and her dance crew and like all, all these like, ama- like hundreds of people at this festival and it was uh, you know you can imagine like a massive ballroom in a in a in a hotel suite and everyone's dancing together for every song and they all like seem to know what they're doing and i was just stood there on my own like i can't do this like everyone just Mm -hmm. seems wait i didn't even know the music i didn't know the dancing like like zero reference to anything like the i know the basic salsa steps like the back and the forward Mm -hmm. and i was literally stood there the whole time like i can't like i just going to make a complete fool of myself and all of our friends are like no just do it people don't mind yeah. that's the whole point and everyone just yeah. you know after after one song and they dance with a partner they go and find another partner and they dance mm-hmm. with them oh yeah I, was, I can't i was like i can't do this so we, we I, went I, I to so. we went to uh there was a cuban restaurant that would have uh cuban salsa you know yeah, live, yeah, yeah. live dancing like friday and saturday nights and we went and I mean, these people were, some of them had to be professional dancers. I mean, there was, they were so good. And like everybody, just what you were describing, everybody was so good. And I sat there and I was like, uh-uh, I'm not even standing up. I'm not getting out of, <laughs> I'm not getting out of this chair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's too intimidating. Do, do you wish that you, you had, though, looking back? I don't think I would have had much fun. You know, because it's, it's kind of what you said. I don't, I don't connect with the music. Yeah. You know, I, 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 can, I can hear the rhythm, but I don't really... F- I, you know, I, I cut my teeth on, you know, Led Zeppelin and Rush and ACDC and, and even the Beatles and stuff. And, you know, there just wasn't much dancing to those things. Yeah. And I, so I didn't grow up dancing and never truly learned how to dance to anything much. And so... Yeah, it's it's not top of my list. Right. Yeah. Uh, so take it or leave uh, it. I I didn't go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of you. I didn't go, but it it took. I sat down and I started meditation, and I thought, okay, okay, here here's what's happening right now. You're not you're not present. Um, this is a great atmosphere. You're having an enormous. I mean, an amazing show here. There are a lot of um, very dynamic, uh, entertaining people, uh, moving and smiling, great energy, right? And I told myself, uh, okay, you're missing all that right now because of all this, you know, thinking about going or not going or whatever. And I just, that was the first step that I became aware of this, right? And I thought, okay, that's what's gonna take care of it. And you know what, little by little, I was absolutely comfortable having just um, a, a, a role of an observer and really enjoying them in their dance and uh, not even feeling intimidated, um, you know, in any way. I just decided for myself, this is not my thing. I'm going to enjoy it as an observer, uh, you know. And, uh, I, I, when, when I made that statement to my wife, I think when she felt that vibration that I was enjoying myself in this role and I wouldn't want to go there. Uh, she didn't have any uh, issue with that. I guess mm-hmm. she understood. Yeah. You know, her man is not going to do something where he is not going to excel. Um, you know, first he's going to go get trained and then he's going to come here. So I guess <laughs> she understood that and that was fine. <laughs> but it did, it was a struggle though. You know, now in that case, uh, would that be going outside your comfort zone? I'm thinking, right? That that that's why I'm interested in that example, right? Would that be taken as like, okay, should have, I should have gone there because that would mean going outside the comfort zone, and maybe I would, um, that would mean growth for me in some way. You know? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Well, it, you know, the easy option was to sit there and and watch. Uh, yeah. yeah, but wh- why go for a more difficult, more painful option? You know, you, you never know. You might have had more fun. Well, it, it, oh, the answer to that question, Gabi, I think is, is what's the value? 
know? yeah. is, is it is it worth the effort? Is it worth the, the maybe the physical pain? Is it worth the psychological stress that you're going to go through to to do whatever it is we're talking about doing? You know, to be able That's... to be in this case to be a better dancer. Mm-hmm. Is it worth it to you? And you decided no, it wasn't worth it. Well, I'm going by Abraham's teachings, and you know, I'm not going to go there unless I feel good about it, right? Mm-hmm. So I wasn't aligned. It was a simple decision. If if yeah. I if I decide that I want to get good at it, then I'll decide. I'll, I'll get into the place where I really feel positive about it. Right. Remember that example when somebody was saying, uh, "I want to <clears throat> come from a plane," right? Um, but I'm really scared, you know, and uh, it really is horrifying. I'm afraid of, of, of heights. You know, should I do it? Should I not do this? Remember, we are followers of Abraham Hicks, uh, Alex. That's what, what I, who I'm referring to. Okay. Uh, and she's like um, a lady who channels, um, uh, you know, information from the collective um, beings, you know, co- collective wisdom of the universe. You know? Yeah. That part I'm not very interested about I, i'm interested in messages <laughs> you know um and she she said to that lady no don't do this if you're not aligned the parachute will not open or a lot of things could go wrong you have to get aligned first to yeah, be sure. and be positive about it. Well, it's one thing to be afraid it's another thing to want to do it yeah mm-hmm. and the, the two are not necessarily mutually exclusive yeah. So you can have something that you you know is going to make your life better. You know it, it's going to be beneficial for you, and you've got resistance to doing it no matter what. But you're okay with being afraid. That's a very know? conditional. And then you're see? everything's That's conditional. Good. Then yeah, you're I mean, then you I can do it and 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 benefit from it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I got a question for you guys. Mm-hmm. What's your biggest fears? Talking Tears. To, talking to people from England. <laughs> I, that's a good question um yeah. biggest fear know. is obviously um you know i mean cataclysmic events where you know if you're not talking about that right when uh, a loved one uh, is at risk and you know aside from that you mean right on the personal yeah. level on the personal yeah, psychological well, stuff yeah you know either either you know something that you're just petrified of or yeah either something personally that's you know a, a big fear for you i think for me it's at least a, one of the things is and it's a thing that that holds a lot of people back from stepping out and and, and doing something um it's kind of it's a fear of having other people say well who the hell are you to, to want to do this you know What's your track record on that? What makes you think I should listen to you? You know, and um, whether it's a valid criticism or not, uh, that doesn't mean anything. You know, but that's that's a common fear for lots of people. Where we we just it's like we don't think that other that other people are going to feel that there's reason to listen. Yeah, I think the only way to combat that, I guess, is with experience. I had a conversation with a friend recently and she was um, giving me some feedback on some of the videos I've put on Instagram. And she said that I should speak more about my own personal experience with what Mm. I'm talking about. Because there's a lot of people who can give advice and do give advice, but the second you tie it back to your own experience, people take more value from it because you're talking from a place of of experience and and, and knowledge, having been through it or or, or whatever That's how you make the connection. Yeah. Right. That's, that's the connection, not, not the other, not the advice. Yeah. And if, if I don't, if you don't give me something to connect with you on, you know, why should I listen to you instead of somebody else who I do connect with? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm still thinking about the biggest fears. Um, I don't think about, well, it's just now the mindset is, is already trained not to invest any, uh, thinking in your fears right yeah. but if I want to kind of go there just to really like think about what would be like that comes my, to mind right away right what would be something that really is unpleasant right uh, I would say 
here in the U.S., I wouldn't be lying that losing your job is the biggest fear, <laughs> especially you have a lot of dependence on you. Yeah. Uh, I had a German uh, lady who came and worked in the U.S. for a couple of years, and uh, she needed to then go back home. And I had a conversation with her, uh, and I asked her, so how was your, like, American experience or whatever, right? And she said, you guys are, I, I, you know what? For two years, I had um, um, almost like a paranoia you know, that I would lose my job. I don't know how you live here. You have no sense of security whatsoever. You could be let go uh, tomorrow. And how do you plan your lives? And I don't know how you sleep <laughs> at night. And I was like, I, you know what? I never thought about this, but it is true. We, I guess we got used to it. And uh, there's a certain, um, you know, immunity now, right? The, and we hope for the best. But uh, as far as the social, um, you know, security uh, net, right? Safety yes. net, safety net. That's one thing that really scares the hell out. Like, uh, of especially fathers who have little kids uh, like me, right? Yeah. So, but I don't, I just don't go there. Yeah, I just don't go there. Yeah. But that's I, one, yeah, yeah. That's an honest, like a really... Uh, you know, after a couple of minutes of thinking about it, that's what comes to mind. Yeah. yeah. You know? So your turn, Alex, what's, you want to share? Uh, mine, well, I mean, I've got one kind of fear in, in terms of a phobia, I guess. It would be, uh, I hate swimming in the sea. Mm. I'm mm -hmm. petrified of sharks. Um, I, I'm as much petrified of them as I am amazed by them. And when I get in the sea, I literally just like freak, like I, I just, pa I get, I panic basically. That's, that's one. Um, and then the other one would be like losing a sense of myself, I guess, like mm -hmm. of who I am. Cause I've kind of been through that whole patch in my life of like high anxiety and, you know, feeling lost and depressed and everything else. And, falling back into that through losing everything I found over the last couple of years, I think is quite a bit of a fear because I know how dark a place it can be and could have been a lot worse, to be honest. Um, so yeah, that would be one. And just knowing now that, you know, I, I do feel like I've got a sense of purpose and, a, and everything else to go with it, that just feel amazing, you know, most of the time, not all the time, because that's, you know, that's obviously not uh, realistic but you know a lot more more than previously but the way the way i describe it to people is i feel like i've got to a point in my life now where you know when you like charge your iphone and it gets to a certain percentage and it says battery is sufficiently charged i feel like i've got to that point in my life where i'm sufficiently charged again and it's like if i fall back below that you you know you start dwindling and going into back into the, the reserve battery power then you know, it's a, it's a problem. So mm. it's like your, your chi energy, you know, the, your, your yeah. chi, they say life, life energy, right? Mm. That's a good, so, yeah, that's a good one. I actually, I, I have to tell you, I, I'm, I agree with you. I thought of that too. Like losing your sense of, uh, you know, that you're in control. Yeah. That uh, in, the, in control of your mind as well. Like, you know, it, it, when you kind of don't, um, respond to the reality or whatever you respond to then you look back and it's like I'm not in control here I, I, it's just things are like slipping away almost right yeah. it was, it, it's yeah. crazy because I had um, a couple of days last week where mm -hmm. my, my mind was just like I, I just had like a weird energy around it and then I found out um, on the second day of the two days I found out halfway through the day that someone I used to work with had passed away. And I kind of got a sense that the, the energy I was feeling was because mm. I, I could almost sense that was coming without even knowing if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Like there was no reason for me to, to, to wake up on Thursday in like a horrendous mood. Just my eyes were just heavy and, you know, I hadn't done anything different to normal. I worked, just woke up on that day and I was just like, it felt like a gray cloud was over me. 
And literally three, four hours after waking up, I'd found out that this person had, you know, unfortunately passed away. And it was just like, fuck. <laughs> and, then, and then on Friday, obviously, I was still, you know, really upset. But that cloud just felt like it lifted a little bit. Mm. So, yeah, I feel like that kind of energy that you were talking about is connected on a, a lot more of a deeper level than I think we understand sometimes. Yeah, it's very real. You yeah. know, I want to ask you about something because we've, in, in the people that we've interviewed, we, we have noticed a pattern, and I want to see if you're finding this too. Um, lots of people who are uh, accomplishing things in their lives, right? And we're not talking to big-time celebrities or anything yet, but a lot of the people that we've spoken to already have been through some, some of them really dark stuff in their lives. Right. One guy was had a gun in his mouth. He was ready to commit suicide. And today he's doing, he's speaking, he's mentoring. He's, you know, he just got done doing a TEDx talk. Um, he's really, his life is taken yeah. off. Um, it, are you seeing the same sorts of things in the people that you're speaking with? Um, maybe not to that extent. Cause I think a lot of the people who I've spoken to are under 30. So they're kind of, I guess they haven't had the opportunity to reach a level so low. Um, but certainly a sense of like breaking through something. You, it, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. no, not yeah. I'm not suggesting everybody has to be super depressed and, and yeah, no, but, you know, there's, suicidal, there's that, there's that, but yeah, there's that saying of, you know, you have to be either broke, homeless or, um, I can't remember the third one, something else to, to really, you know, find to have your breakthrough moment mm. that's what most people find it is when you're at your lowest um, but i think for, for me it's more a sense of a younger generation of people who are striving to create something bigger than themselves in the world um, mm. that's the kind of overarching thing theme i guess w within the the, the um, interviews i've done um, although that, that said, I have got an interview coming out next week with a DJ who's who's fairly famous in the UK, and he's he's got he's only got one arm, and he lost his arm when he was 15 because he had a he had a condition in it, and it, they they had to amputate it. And at that point, when they amputated his arm, they, he wasn't a he hadn't started DJing. He'd only started DJing after, and you think you know for someone who's only got one arm, you, the first thing you think of as a DJ is, you know, this motion, mm -hmm. isn't it? Two hands. So for him to take that upon himself, because he was so passionate about music and wanted to do it, I guess is a similar kind of thing of hitting that real low moment, but then pushing through and breaking through to something greater. Well, your story fits that model. Yeah, yeah, I guess mm -hmm. so. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's part of why I do what I do, I guess, is having gone through that um, and trying to share those, my message and other people's messages um, in, in similar veins, I guess. So anybody out there who's listening or watching, stick with it. Don't give up. Better times are always hope. Yeah. yeah. Always on. I think when, when you were talking about this energy, right? Um, I think being around positive people in those times, you know, and I think in, in general, in general, uh, the, the, you, you want to get out of this as soon as you can. And sometimes you just can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. And, um, I found that for myself, I almost like, I know that I have to get out of this and I know a few people who can get me out of it. And I'll just go and talk with them. See, yeah, we're coming back to the uh, uh, the the meaningful conversations, you know. So you could you could yeah. come to these people and say, "Here, I'm 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 feeling that way," you know. And uh, you know, we'll have a little chat, and I would feel almost in you know, in five minutes or ten minutes, I'll yeah. feel a little better already. Yeah. Have, have you got any other practices that you do when you're you know feeling you know low or down or mm -hmm. You know, is, is there anything you do other than that? 
Oh yeah, music, of course, you know, music. Um, I have my own sort of like, you know, gotta be special playlist on Spotify. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, um, melodies that are designed to get me out of pretty much anything, you know. Um, yeah, music's an easy one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and they're not like all very cheerful, or you know, it, 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 they're, they're just great pieces of art mm. carrying so much beauty. Um, and beauty, I think, carries uh, the energy of love yeah in it so i would listen to and the high fidelity headphones and i would just be amazed at the creativity of those musicians and it would lift me up and it's like oh my god you mm. know divine or even like getting out and enjoying art you know uh just looking like um at an amazing amazing work of art and it's like how in the world did they come up with I mean, what sense of beauty there encapsulated in this? And I would just be also so it 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 it, it could be uh, messengers of um, of beauty and love, you know, whatever that is. It could be objects. It could be, you know, shopping is a great idea too. <laughs> <laughs> Go get yourself uh, a nice piece of like I went to um, true 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 religion, right? Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, this happy Buddha. Uh, and I uh, recently, you know, and um, I got this amazing, amazing t shirt. I felt so much, <laughs> so much better. <laughs> you know, it works. <laughs> He's a simple man with simple, simple <laughs> needs. <laughs> I, I want to contribute something here. I think um, one thing that's, that works for me when I get myself to do it. Mm -hmm when I'm in, uh, in a funk, you know, is physical activity. Um, yeah. But it has to be something that, that requires mental focus. Um, mm -hmm. I like to, to ride my mountain bike. Um, mm -hmm. And if you're riding a trail, you don't have time to dwell mm -hmm. on, on the stuff that's bothering you. You've got to pay attention to the rocks and the, you know, snakes and stuff. Um, so that's, I, yeah, walking, you know, is no good. Jogging probably is not, not enough. Um, but for for me, that's a that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree with that one. What, what about you, Alex? Um, what do I, I I I go similar to Tim, really. Something a, a physical activity. Um, mm -hmm. to like go go to the gym and work out and just. You know, that for me, that's one place where I go in the mornings before work and it's a good way to start my day because I can start my day with a clear head by when I'm in the gym, I've only got two things to concentrate on, whatever exercise I'm doing and then whatever I'm listening to. So it could be a podcast or, you know, normally it's a podcast. So I've only got two things to listen to and it shuts everything else out and it's just a real easy way to focus or... Well, I guess going for like a walk for me is, is quite nice. I don't do that often enough. Um, but it's quite a nice walk near my, my flat where I live. You can go on. Um, a meditation is the other one. That doesn't always work. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of tough. I think the, the, really the key is whatever works for somebody to get their focus away from whatever they're, they're digging that hole on, you know. It's just doesn't even matter what you're what you're focused on. It just has to be different. Yeah, Some, exactly. something less less ugly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was thinking it's just going to take your your mind off of it for a second and you know concentrate on something else and yeah. then allow your mind to subconsciously dwell on the fact that whatever it is you're worrying about is probably not a massive importance in terms of the course of your life. You know, and sometimes there are things that will be quite massive and impactful, but it's also knowing how to to, to focus yourself away from those and just keep yourself in a, in a nice headspace. Just one other thing I want to mention, you guys, because I just thought about this: submerging myself in in the water. 
as many times as you as you can you know uh so you're going so the water covers your head completely yeah. and you, you're in a fetus position your feet don't touch the, the floor yeah and you're going back and forth like that as many times as you can that has it's proven water has this quality um uh the quality of mercy it's a cleansing uh quality yeah. well that would certainly take your mind off of whatever else you're it you're and you do it with, often right? you do so it it's... often uh many many cultures from a long long time ancient wisdom you know that yeah. um, submerging yourself in the water could really help uh really relief and uh, give you mental uh you know mental relief absolutely mm -hmm. I do that when you know if, if there is an opportunity to like I, I live by the ocean so yeah it's easy and if it's a natural um, environment where you could go amazing yeah well I'm, I'm kind of with Alex on the whole ocean thing I've been I've been here for 30 years and I've been like up to my knees one time yeah. in the ocean I, it just doesn't yeah I don't have any need to go yeah I've, but, I've, I've been able to like you know, if I, if I'm if I'm at the beach, I'll go in waist waist height max. If I'm feeling adventurous, chest height. Mm. But I have had times where I've been on like a a boat and I've jumped in, but then I literally jump straight back out. Like I won't yeah. walk around for any amount of time. It's in out, and that's it. Yeah, I'm not even comfortable on a lake. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I certainly won't be bobbing around in the water like Gabby, that's for sure. <laughs> well, Wait. here's All an right. opportunity to go outside your comfort zone. Dude. Yeah, man. On the lake. <laughs> All right, so we're, um, we're running up against time because I actually have a, a time limit this time around. Um, so, Alex, is, is, anything that uh, – well, we want to do two things. One, one is I, I wanted to ask if there's anything in particular you want to share – any, any words of wisdom you want to leave for the audience? And then the other is we want to make sure everybody knows how to get, get hold of you. Um, oh, let me have a think for two seconds. Uh, I think, you know, I think for me, a real big thing that I've discovered over the course of this journey of like the last couple of years is just to be authentic, just be real, just be yourself, just, just like, embrace your imperfections embrace who you are just don't be afraid to show your true self like i've kind of i feel like i've sometimes hidden behind it a bit of a shield but the more i've kind of opened up and, and shown my vulnerabilities and and shown you know who i am and what you know what my mind is like the more you know you kind of just you just become you get a sense of lightness in your in yourself and you just kind of feel more you know attuned and present within within the world like i think that'd be it for me just stop trying to be perfect and just start mm -hmm. being authentic we're all okay as we are and yeah you know we're all trying to get better and, yeah. yeah and that's that's it as long as you're continuing to kind of grow and develop and try and better yourself then you know you're on the right path yeah Cool. I'm on the right path just being born here. I'm already good. Uh, you know, that whole, I think, is that socialization or striving anywhere, you know, prove something. Come on. I mean, enjoy every bite of your food and drink yeah. water and look at the sunset. Yeah. Done. That's enjoy right. it. Yeah. Yeah. Just All right. Well, on those, those words of wisdom, uh, Alex, let, let's... Tell everybody how to find the podcast. Uh, any other sort of contact information you want to give? Yeah, so you can lay it on us. To find the podcast, all you have to do is go to uh, the podcast app on your phone. It could be the iTunes one or most of the other ones that uh, are available and search Dreamers Disease. Uh, it's also available on SoundCloud if you search The Dreamers Disease. Uh, you can follow the Instagram page at the underscore Dreamers Disease. And me personally, I'm on Instagram and Twitter at I am Alex Manzi. And yeah, it just I'm I'm always open to conversations and speaking with people. So if you want to message me, I'm I'm here to be messaged and chat back basically. Cool. 
Hey Alex, right, I'm well, going to continue. You. I'm going to continue listening to your podcast on SoundCloud. And I'm telling you, now that I met you in person, it makes it so much more special. Thank uh, you. And I think your uh, audience, if they watch this and they get a sense of your being, right? They'll they'll have a I think a, more chances to connect to your yeah. message. And uh, yeah. best yeah. of luck to you. Thank you, you guys yeah. too, and thanks for having me. Thank it's you. Been, been a pleasure. Um, Hopefully we can reconnect sometime soon. Yep, let's do it again. All right, All right man. Come visit your Take family care. in San Diego. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, yeah. I'll come <laughs> over. Yeah, yeah. I, I know who to give a shout to. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, cool. Take care. Cool, guys. See you later. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. Hi, this is Tim Starr. Thanks for joining me and Gabi on the, the universe between your ears. We really appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us for a little while. And we'd like to see you again. So be sure to subscribe wherever it is you're consuming the podcast from, whether it's YouTube or Stitcher or iTunes or whatever the hell else is out there. We want to see you again. We also want to hear from you. So let us know what you think of each episode. Let us know if you've got an idea for a future episode that you think would be just killer. Absolutely. Let us know. All right. Thanks again. And we will see you next time around. Bye-bye.